if we're willing to, to, to potentially statically map the instructions to these ALUs, we can encode where to send things. In whiteboard discussions, UT computer science professors Steve Keckler and Doug Berger made discoveries that ruffled some feathers. They challenged the way computer microprocessors are designed. The prototype chip uh, that was designed here in this building had uh, 170 million transistors. It was among the most complex uh, chips and, and system efforts done in academia, period. As children, Doug and Steve were both fascinated by science. So it's not surprising that in college, they both specialized in computer architecture. We first met, I think, in uh, 1993 uh, at uh, a computer architecture conference when we were graduate students and you know, kept seeing each other over and over again and, and uh, you know, our, our lives kept intersecting in various ways. Doug and Steve decided to team up. They started the TRIPS lab at UT, a project aimed at discovering ways to improve the performance of computers. We're simulating, I think, 48 entries on T-Flex. That's right. Now, let's right. still take a little bit of a performance. Doug and Steve made a controversial discovery. In 2000, they published a paper that said computers would reach their performance limits. Doug and Steve warned the tech industry it needed to stop designing microprocessors for computers that had large centralized components. The wires and switches on those components were becoming overloaded. If you uh, centralize a structure in the real world or in silicon, uh, it's more efficient for things to communicate within it, but as it grows, it gets more and more unwieldy. So imagine airports if you tried to centralize all airports in a single location. So what, did, what were you able to measure in terms of uh, the temperature and the, and, the, and the power and the correlation between the two? So the, correlation between the, two the TRIPS and lab and allowed them to design and build a prototype of a microprocessor that had much higher peak performance than the chips the industry was using. The TRIPS chip featured multiple copies of components. They were connected to each other so that they could share the workload. The results Steve and Doug produced sent chip makers back to the drawing board. Not only did it inspire people to look at radically different new microarchitectures for the future, but it also inspired the way we design compatible x86 microprocessors. It really did shake people up a bit. Now Steve and Doug are making the TRIPS chip even better. We're now on our third generation microarchitecture and have some very, very compelling results. I just want to see this technology widely deployed. I mean, it's, 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 everyone thinks their baby is beautiful, right? This has been a, a very rewarding uh, period of my life to be working with Doug uh, and the, the students that we've recruited. It's just been a fantastic team.